I'm Joyce Hornady. You might say accuracy is my business. I make bullets. You are listening to the Hornady Podcast. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Hornady Podcast. Thanks for tuning in on this episode. It's one that I'm personally incredibly excited about. We're talking new products, 2023, specifically the 7mm Precision Rifle Cartridge. I couldn't be more excited about it. I'm joined around the table by folks that are equally excited. To my right, Assistant Director of Engineering and Purveyor of the Ballistic Development Group and a bunch of new product stuff, Joe Thielen. And then across the table, Marketing Director Neil Davies and Senior Ballistician Jaden Quinlan. Guys, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, that's exciting. Thanks, Seth. Sitting here (laughs) in my seat, wringing my hands together because this is... 7 millimeter precision rifle cartridge, the 7 PRC that rounds out the entire precision rifle cartridge family. And uh, of all three of them, this is the one I'm, I am I have the most uh, enjoyment out of. I don't know. I'm just a 7 millimeter fan, and I can't get enough of it. Well, what's the history well, of this sh- thing? I should, I should yeah, lead you, have you off on you that. Have, you have history. Yeah, we do have some history. Well, yeah. you, there's a reason you're so excited. Yeah, yeah. well, it's <laughs> that reason. So. And I think a lot of it goes back to just the 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 benefit of shooting a 284 diameter bullet. When you get really long, high BC bullets in the 284 diameter, you get all the ballistic efficiency of these big 30 cals, but you do it with a much more moderately shaped cartridge at much more manageable recoil. And it's not so big that I don't want to shoot an antelope with it, but it's big enough that I would absolutely take an elk at range with it. And so for me, it just is kind of the ultimate utilitarian cartridge. And I've spoken to a bunch of people during the release of this cartridge and my f- and told them that my first custom rifle was a 7 millimeter Remington Magnum and I went with an 8 twist and I seeded bullets out to 3.45 inches so I seeded them longer than Sammy and I ran it with 69 grains of Rotumbo which was over the Sammy pressure for the 7 mag because 7 mag's got a kind of a limited Sammy pressure window and I did everything custom and I just got amazing performance with the 175 but I had to do everything custom and that's cool, and it was awesome, but this is just the next level, and everybody can have this, and that's probably why I'm so excited. So yeah. we probably should start with the history. Um, a lot of people out there, I don't know, maybe it's been lost in some of these, but you used to work with Jaden in the in the ballistic lab for a while. So yep, and that's when this thing that's came out. That's where it a, was born. Was skunk, where we, skunk works. When we were slow a little bit, you know, maybe around Thanksgiving, you know, holiday season, <laughs> something like that, and we got a couple free minutes, I'd yeah. find Seth over there tinkering with what now became the Seth. Yeah, well, and that's really how it started. So uh, years ago, I did work in, uh, for engineering in the ballistics lab with Jaden, which was an awesome experience. And uh, again, always been a seven millimeter fan at heart. And we had an engineer at the time that's no longer with the company, but he was also a seven millimeter fan. And uh, he worked for the case plant. So, you know, we were always bannering back and forth. Well, okay, well, let's try the 6.5 PRC case and let's neck that up. And so necked it up and, and got a reamer and then the cartridge shot fine. It just left meat on the bone because to get adequate velocity performance out of the short action cartridge, you really had to stand on it. And, and that's popular right now with the 7 SOM. Um, but in the real world, we can't operate anything north of 65,000 pounds and we you know we try to keep it conservative so that didn't really work out so then we're to the drawing board and you know all right let's let's do a you know a longer case not as long as the 300 because we want to we don't want to go screaming down the the drag strip like uh some other overboard cartridges that really sacrifice barrel life and shootability so we came up with this cartridge case that optimized the available propellants that were available at the time seated those bullets out right where they belong, wrapped the chamber around there, ordered a, a reamer. And uh, kind of before that, uh, again, on a, I think it was a Friday, so things were slow. I was in the lab, uh, in the upstairs lab. They weren't necessarily slow. You just, well, it's Friday. It was Friday, right? and I yeah. wanted to play around. And so I had this theory that, okay, we should target 65 to 70 grains of powder. Mm-hmm. Anything more than that, mm-hmm. man, that's a small hole to cram that much powder. So I took a, a seven millimeter Remington Magnum and I seated a 175 out such that it matched the uh, case volume of what we were looking at doing from a, a PRC case standpoint. And uh, yeah, filled it up with 68 grains of Reloader 26 and shot it in the pressure and velocity barrel. And it was 3,000 feet per second at 64,000 pounds. That, that mousetrap's going to work. And I knew 
just from a more efficient case shape, we would drop that pressure a little bit. Uh, but I knew that the, the potential was there. And mm -hmm. so I still have one of those rounds that I loaded during that test. I have it in my desk. <laughs> and uh, yeah, then the, the, the race was on. I, we brought it up to Joe. Joe was like, get after it, you know, order barrels. So we got test barrels and uh, had some cases made. and with the, with the head stamp already on them? We did. And this we would did. have been in 2018 and 19 kind of time frame. Yes. Um, so I didn't see the light of day till that's year the thing. Ago, it didn't see the ago. light of day. Yeah, we got so busy then yeah. too. So we just didn't, it was one of those things we couldn't make, we couldn't support yeah. it. Yeah. That we've time. talked about before. Yeah. Like the, the brass plant was hyper stressed as it is now. Cause that's a lengthy thing to do is make a stick of brass. But yeah, Joe uh, got the case plant to make a barrel of brass. Uh, we chambered a gun. Um, we had the pressure and velocity barrel and any free moment I had working in the lab, I was playing around with it because it's it was great to see and uh that was really the start of it and now fast forward a few years it's a sammy approved cartridge there are going to be factory rifles available factory ammo available so whether you're at an elr match or you're shooting an elk at six seven hundred yards this cartridge will will do it all and uh and do it with with a really shootable platform and that's why i'm so excited uh, in development, it bears the name Precision Rifle Cartridge, like the 6.5 and 300, so it meets all of the qualifications to wear that name. Chamber, cartridges, designs that concurrently, all the things that we do to make sure that the cartridge is first and foremost accurate, consistent, reliable, all of those things. And then obviously mass producible at, you know, yep. SAMI standard. So. Yep. Yep, it's just a, a great one. it's a great cartridge that sits right in the middle of the 65 and the 300. So before we we dive into some of the comparables and some of the the hardcore numbers, uh I know Jaden prepared for this a little bit. I really want to take a look into the history of 7 millimeters, and that really parallels the same thing we did with 65 and the same thing we did with 300. When you look at the 65 PRC, there were a lot of people saying well, I've been doing that with a 65284 right. forever, and that's cool, but it takes a custom rifle, with a custom twist rate. You're not getting factory ammo that's going to have that performance. And, and likewise, pressure and yeah, pressure exactly. and all those things. Yeah. And, then, and and the why? Why yeah. did you, why did you guys do this? Why do we need another cartridge? Well, right. this this history, this will outline it. And the same yeah. thing was true for the 300 with the 300 Win Mag. The 300 PRC, you know, you can duplicate that performance with a 300 Win Mag, but it takes all that custom stuff. So right. Without further ado, Jaden, walk us through some of the history of the seven millimeter cartridges that a guy could just get. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to reference some notes here. Um, we're going to look at the the Sammy standardized seven millimeter cartridges that are out there. Obviously, there's a whole bunch more. You know, the Wildcat world is full of modifications. But let's let's talk about standards because when it comes to what you said, Seth, you got all that performance from that custom seven mag you built. But not everybody has the capability, whether it's funding or, or equipment or, or anything like that, to do it. So it's easier to just go get a, have it already done, right? Exactly. And so when you look at the 7 millimeter lineup um, of SAMI approved cartridges, this goes all the way back to a cartridge that uh, came out in the 1890s, the 7 Mauser. So that's a little while ago. A little that's while ago. That's a couple ago. grandpas ago, <laughs> like we yeah. like to talk in grandpas. Um, and then as you progress into the early 1900s, there's the 7 by 64 you know, both of these cartridges are definitely limited, um, especially in, in the velocity performance that they get. You know, the 7 Mauser, you're going to be 2,500-ish with a 160 grain bullet. Uh, the 7x64, 2,600, a little bit better, not a whole lot. Then you start to get into, say, the, you know, the mid-19s, so like 1960s and 70s time frame. You see the, the 7 Mag, the 280 Remington or the 7 Express. Uh, and the 7 STW come out. And what you're seeing is an increase in capacity, right? Yeah, case capacity, larger cartridge case designs, range. more propellant, higher velocity, stuff like that. Um, 7 Weatherby, also shouldn't forget that one, obviously with Roy, Roy Weatherby's work on just screaming speed. Yeah, right? how fast can we go? Yeah. All of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so that's kind of that era where you see velocity really getting pushed. But what you see with each one of those cartridges is some limitations. Those limitations are both twist rate and what we call head height. And so one of the things we look at when we analyze a cartridge is how long is the cartridge case and then how long is the cartridge overall length. And if right. you subtract those two from each other, the difference in those is how much bullet can stick out of the case. Right. And those are SAMI dimensions. SAMI dimensions, right. right. This means that if we build the ammo this way, it'll work in the gun that way, right? Well, the 7 Weatherby only allows for a uh, 0.811 about uh, 
amount of bullet out of the case. Well, that pretty much limits to, limits you to a 160 class bullet or less. So the modern 175 ELDX, the 180 ELD match, the 190 tip, they won't fit. You right. can't use them. Also, the twist rate is a 10 twist. It won't stabilize those bullets. And that's the same case with the STW. Uh, essentially, it can only hold a, a 160 class bullet. It can't hold the, the modern heavies. The twist rate's a little better to nine and a half, but that's still not enough. Right. Um, so you see those limitations. As you come into the 2000s, uh, you start talking about the, the REMSOM or the RUM, the 7 REM Short Action Ultra Mag or the 7 Remington Ultra Mag. Yep. Both of those are limited in the exact same way. They can't fit a bullet that's more than 160 grains. Yeah. You know, that's a very aerodynamic design, right? You have some older, you know, old 175 grain spire point or something. Sure, it's going to fit that and work, but ballistically, you're... Yeah, you don't have the advantage of these modern day bullets. You get into... Uh, uh, you know, the 280 Ackley comes out in like 2008, um, kind of same thing. It's it's also limited in those same ways. And then you hit the 28 Nosler, and, and I'm going to throw it back to you for a second on the 28 Nosler, because you said you've been a 7 guy for forever, yeah. and when the 28 Nosler came out, you got a little bit excited. I did, yeah. And, you know, Joe has been a 280 Ackley fan since I've known him, mm -hmm. and so that cartridge getting standardized was really cool, because it is a cool cartridge, and there's some there's some romance to it, you know, of, of all the Ackley cartridges, the 280 Ackley she makes punished, the most sense. It's a cartridge. Yeah, and it's, it's an awesome well, yeah. cartridge. And it's a well-balanced cartridge. It, it holds is. the right amount of powder and all that. But guess what mine is? All custom. Yep. So I can seat the bullets out long. I put a yep. faster twist barrel on it yep. to utilize that stuff. So it's, right. I did the same thing you did so, with 7 Mag. I, I got no qualms with the 280 Ackley. And it's going to run like a 162 grain bullet. Awesome. And, and, and it does great. But those big heavies, not so much. Well, then when the 28 Nosler came out, I was drooling. I was pumped because at the time we didn't have a turnkey, I can buy factory ammo in a factory rifle, seven millimeter cartridge that I know is going to work. I heard about the 28 Nosler and I was like, okay, this is going to be awesome. The velocity numbers are appreciable. Let's go take a look. So jump on sammy.org, go to the new cartridges tab. And I was ultimately pretty let down. Um, yeah, the velocity numbers are great, but then you do the head height calculation and I'm like, I can't use the 180 LD match at a factory length. I can't use the 175 LDX. It's got a nine twist. Mm. Um, and I'm not just, you know, trying to, to rag on our friends at Nosler because we are, we do have friends at Nosler and it's a cartridge that's uh, close to being really, really good, but it just had some limitations. And then when I saw the cartridge size and how much propellant would be required to fill that thing up, I mean, that, that right there was a, that was strikes two and three for me. Not only, but I have to build something custom to get the performance that I would want. Factory ammo is going to suffer because we can't use our super you know, efficient bullets. And it's got a too large of a case uh, to be really efficient. So you're not going to get the low recoil that everybody wants the 7 millimeter for compared to those big 30s. Um, and you're going to be chewing up tons of powder in a 284 diameter hole. And carbon rings are going to be a problem. Barrel life is going to be shortened. And like I said, I was really excited initially. And you can still custom, customize the 28 Nosler to be, my gosh, the fastest trip down the drag strip. And, you know, you can use the bullets you want with the right twist rate. But again, it takes extra work. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I was pretty let down at that point. So that was 2014. That kind of rounds out, you know, the, call it the history of the 7 millimeter standardized cartridges. Mm -hmm. And so you can see through that progression from 1890 all the way up to 2014, we get benefits velocity-wise. But nobody ever steps out of the box and says, hey, let's go to a little faster twist. Let's design the cartridge case in a way where we can fit these really long, modern, heavy, heavy <clears throat> modern day bullets. Mm -hmm. Well, there's the 7 PRC. I mean, you saw this same, this same trend happen again with the 6.5 PRC and the 300 PRC in what you opened with in the comparison to legacy 30 cal or 6.5 cartridges and how it took all the limits off. There's no more limitations. You can shoot those same old bullets that those old car cartridges were designed for back in the mid-1900s. The 7 PRC will shoot those just fine, just like those cartridges do. However, those cartridges can't do what the 7 PRC can do with the new modern bullets. And that, I mean, that's, you know, if you had to sum it up in one brief, succinct statement, I mean, it's a, it's a modern 7 millimeter Magnum. It's what yeah. it is. It's a, yep, it's a exactly modern it 7 Magnum yep. um, that takes advantage of modern, high-performance, long-for-caliber bullets. Yep. That other guns just, or pardon me, other cartridges can't in their standard configurations. Yeah. And, and, in, and in working on this project, it's interesting because we've worked with a lot of folks in the gun making side. 
And there are plenty of custom guys that will throw out of this cartridge or that cartridge or this cartridge. Well, what they fail to keep in mind is that they can do whatever. You know, they can make a different chamber design, man, and, and different twist rate barrels and stuff. But once, you, once you're working within SAMI voluntary specs, these are the things you have to adhere to. And those cartridges weren't designed to do that stuff. So now we have a modern production quality 7 millimeter Magnum cartridge that will be adopted by many people on the gun side as of this recording. There, there's a lot of them. Yeah. It, it wouldn't be fair for us to start naming names yet until they do their releases, but most of the household names that people are aware of are very interested in this and have, have at least made prototypes, if not production guns. Yep. That's, yeah, that's a, a good summary because uh, it is the modern. It takes modern propellants, modern bullets, modern advancements in, in chamber design methodology. And so you get that turn key accuracy that you've come to expect from the rest of the precision rifle cartridges, the Creedmoors, the Arc, everything that you've known and grown to like about those cartridges where you can buy the affordable rifle, where you can build the custom rifle, and they all perform really well with factory ammo. Um, that right there is is exactly why you do a 7 PRC. We're not trying to obsolete any existing cartridge because if you've got a 7 mag and it's custom built and it's doing great for you, awesome. Yeah. Great, shoot it. Uh, but for the the uh, for the advancement into the years down the road, when you're looking for accuracy, like Joe mentioned, yeah. this was designed with accuracy first, just like when you designed the 300 PRC. Yep. And yeah. I mean, part, a big part of that again is that chambered a cartridge interface that's happening with the chamber reamer designs and all those things done concurrently with each other that propels that bullet straight down the bore every time. Yep. And it's not just the dimensions. It's the dimensions and the tolerances mm -hmm. associated with those yep. dimensions. So yep. whether you get a, a min spec or a max spec chamber cut, it's going to be inherently accurate. It's going to be forgiving, going to help that bullet enter the rifling straight, like Neil mentioned. It's just all things that are good. Um, yeah. so, Should we talk a little bit about what it is? Yeah. Because like, people are say, probably like, okay, well, this is all cool. Yeah, but what is it? So, let's get into some, <laughs> yeah. seven, some specs and comparisons Sure. The seven, uh, seven PRC is a standard, like Neil said, modern... Uh, seven millimeter magnum cartridge that is a standard 3.340 col which is the same as a seven mag a 300 wind mag yeah it's the same so well essentially if you had a seven mag barrel you could pull that barrel off and put a seven prc barrel on that same gun and it your magazine box works feeds functions all of those yep. things um it's a standard 532 maximum diameter case head so yep, it's a standard, standard magnum standard magnum bolt face um, it does not have a belt like all the other PRCs, so you get excellent interface head spacing fit in your chamber. And then obviously the big difference is head height um, and the twist rate. The twist rate is a standard at an eight yeah. um, twist, eight yep. inches per one revolution. So, And this cartridge is no slouch. You know, if we, yeah. if we look back to that period in history where everybody's going for speed, you know, the 1940s to the 80s, so... The seven Weatherby, we'll just look at a 160 grain bullet across the board here as a kind of a middle to heavier weight comparison. Sure. I mean, a seven Weatherby within the pressure limitations is going to be pushing a 160 at, you know, 3050 to 3100 out of a 24 inch barrel. The seven PRC is right there with it, 3075, 3100. So it's not like it's leaving stuff on the table that right. these legacy cartridges had. Um, and, and same thing as you go, you go to, down the list. Now, Neil, you brought up a good point that some folks out there are taking the short mag cartridges, whether that's a seven Wisdom or a seven uh, Remsom, and they're they're standing on them pretty hard and, yeah. and saying, "Well, I get you know I can get thirty one hundred with a one hundred and sixty class bullet, not measuring mag, pressure, but you're yeah. not doing it within pressure limitations." Yeah, but they have air quotes for the listener, no signs of pressure. All right. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's we 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 should. We, we should probably do a podcast on that yeah, on time yes. because it, yeah. no. Shade, shade tree ballisticians. We yeah. have really dove into that a lot because we hear that all the time out when we're shooting is, oh, I'm running this at this. And we, we've we shot that same load in the lab. So we know what the pressure is. And, nope, I don't got any pressure signs yet. Yeah, I know you don't see them, but I'm telling you it's there. Yeah. So, or but that's a, a conversation Tangential, for time. but my favorite thing to hear out of somebody's mouth in this regard, and, and this is just me being uh, petty, but when they say, well, I'm running in this bullet. At this speed, with no signs of pressure, no heavy bolt lift, <laughs> but my brass only lasts two firings. Yeah, like oh, there might yeah, be a no reason why, <laughs> and that's why this was developed. I mean, it's again, it's a modern seven millimeter magnum that yep. launches these heavy bullets within safe Sammy 
pressures, with the yep. right twist rate, everything. Yep. Yeah. Then that's key, that that SAMI standardization and CIP approval as well is paramount when we're trying to make something available to everybody. Yeah. Right. Yes. You know, it's that's that's the key. And you know, it, co- coincidentally, it worked out that it was real easy. Like Joe mentioned, three point three four zero overall length. There's not a gun maker out there that makes a long action that won't fit this. And, right. and most of the folk, well, pretty much everybody we've spoken to that's been in development on the gun side just start smiling when you start talking about it. And then they make their, their prototypes and... And they just work. Yeah, they work. And they shoot well. They yeah. feed. They're accurate. One thing I wanted to mention as of the time of this recording, Joe, you mentioned all the specs and we went with a one and eight twist. Uh, so that is a sufficient twist rate to stabilize any seven millimeter bullet on the market from any manufacturer today. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and for our factory ammo, we're going to launch this, or we are launching this right now with three loads available. The I think the first that we want to talk about is the Precision Hunter load. Mm. You know, this cartridge, does it have match application? Absolutely. But it really is going, I think, going to find home as a hunting cartridge. And our 175 ELDX ballistically is just fantastic. Doppler radar, verified BCs, drag coefficient tables available on Ford off. Um, that's doing 3000 feet per second from a 24 inch barrel. Yeah. That right there. If you can't kill something with that combination, you're, you're I mean, doing I, something wrong. I wrote some of the numbers down just from, from a gun that I have at, and it's nominally 2,900 feet per second. Cause it's a shorter barrel. Short than, barrel. Than, yep. So pushing that 175, I ran it at like elk elevation. So 5,000 feet. So at 900 yards, you're still carrying 15, 21 foot pounds of energy. Wow. Plenty. At 500 yards, you have 2,183 foot-pounds of energy. So it, so it is a cruise missile. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. It is a lot. Well, and not to mention your trajectory is so good. Yeah. Let yeah. the bullet do the work. work. Let, let the bullet do the work. And the G1BC on this is a 689. Mm. And so, uh, again, that's an honest Mach 2 and a quarter yeah. BC. That is, uh, that, that is no slouch. Um, and, again, that bullet will perform from 50 yards to down to impact velocities as low as 1,600 feet per second. So from a 24-inch barrel at 3,000 feet per second, that's, I mean, that is a heavy long ball hitter there. Yeah. And we, we've been, you know, most of the folks out there, we, we test this stuff early on. As soon as we get things going, we've taken it out and use it in real, real world applications and on hunts, you know, at this point internationally. So it's been overseas to South Africa on hunts. Used it here domestically Canada. on a variety of animals. Yeah, Seth took it to Canada with some folks, and it's proved to work exceedingly well. I mean, yep. three elk were killed with it in the last couple weeks. Yeah, um, plains game animals in South Africa: kudu, nyala, very rugged, tough uh, zebra, down to smaller stuff. Ranges from, you know, I've I've seen it used at 500 on down. Yep. with with impressive results all the way across the board. Yep, that's true, and so. Go ahead, Joe. Well, I was just going to say, while we were on all of this velocity and number stuff, we should, we did not caveat that those magnums that Jaden was listing, seven, Weatherby, Rem Mag, all of those magnums, 28 Nosler, they are all listed, advertised, 26 inch barrel oh, yeah, for speed. ballistic. Yeah. Sure. The seven PRC is a 24. That's yeah. a big note. That is yeah. a huge, that's, yeah. That is a lot. Two inches of barrel is a lot when it's you're about burning these fifty foot per when second. you're burning these powders. So we just we need this, you know, we we built this thing around not having this giant broomstick handle of a barrel on. No, we're gonna build a <laughs> rifle that is that's good compact. Point. Sorry, I laugh looking at Seth because I think Seth would probably try to run it in a sixteen or something. Uh, <laughs> no, my personal rifle is a twenty. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> but uh I, I it's a great but point. that is but you have a twenty. I know twenty two variety. I have twenty two and a twenty four. Yeah. A twenty two. Twenty two. So I mean we have very we've tried this in a lot and they And we have we did twenty eights as well we did, for yeah. like ELR application. Yeah, we did on a match just to yeah. test it out. Yeah. But and all that stuff it worked very, very well. My twenty inch barrel, uh and and Preston, the guy behind the camera here, he's got a twenty inch barrel as well. Factory precision hunter for me is running twenty nine ten. And again, in North America wow, and 29. pretty much anywhere around the world. About 20, it's tight. With, uh, that, with That's great though. With I mean, that, that 175, that, that thing is, yeah, as far as I feel comfortable shooting. Yeah, the bullet's sure. going to work bullet. beyond where you're willing to yeah. pull the trigger. So yes. yep. And yeah. so now changing gears real quick. Well, we'll stick with the hunting uh, side. So uh, the second line of ammo we have out there is the Outfitter line of ammunition. Mm. And the Outfitter quickly gained a reputation of just unrelenting terminal performance because we feature the CX bullet. So you get the nickeled case, excuse me, it's waterproofed on both ends. 
and it's got that CX bullet. Now we custom made a CX bullet specifically for this application. Now I don't know, Jaden, if you know the muzzle velocity specs on that yet, but tell us about the bullet for sure. So the 160 CX, uh, if you're familiar with the CX line that we came out with last year, you saw the big heavy hitters, the 130 grain in the 6.5 and the 190 grain mm. in the 30 caliber. And essentially that's a no holds barred. Let's do everything we can aerodynamically to these bullets to give you the you know top tier performance that you couldn't even imagine in a traditional monolithic style bullet. You sure. know, when you look at those from a legacy perspective, there was nothing like these things around. Well, we did the same thing for the 7 PRC and it's a 160 grain CX. And essentially that thing is, it's a monster, just like your 175 is. I mean, you have a 160 grain solid bullet going 3,000 feet per second. Again, same example. There's nothing in the, you know, North America or, or the Plains game species yeah. in Africa that you can't touch with that thing and it do the job. Yep. And that, that 160 CX really has in a, in a really similar profile and shape to our 180 ELD mm -hmm. match, which yeah. we'll talk about next. So it's got the shape drag benefits of those super sleek bullets and only one cantilever groove. That's right. And as like we discussed in our CX podcast, that cantilever groove creates an area where a shockwave formation will occur. And so every time you add a cantilever, it's going to increase yeah. the drag. So we limit it to just the one. Uh, it still reduces the bearing surface, still allows a place for that copper to deposit um, and, and gives us those benefits. Uh, but we only put one on there to maximize its aerodynamic efficiency. So that load right there is just, I mean, that's that's what we used in, in Canada. And uh, that bullet is a juggernaut, really. Yeah, is. and the advancements on the CX and our T-Chill tip is yep. part of the mix. Featured in Ford Off. Featured in Ford Off. Yep. You've got an extended range monolithic solid hunting bullet that will penetrate for days. I mean, that, yep. that's, boy, they do that. Retain yep. a lot of weight. They do. Usually, yeah, 95% or more. So that's awesome. Now, the, the third and final ammunition that's available from the factory right out of the gate is our ELD Match ammunition that features the ELD Match bullet. Now, this one is really the juggernaut. I'm using that word pretty loosely just all over the place here, but I'll tell you what, that 180 grain bullet, for those that have used it, it is almost untouchable regardless of manufacturer to include our heavier 190 grain bullet because it's a little bit lighter, 180 grains, you pick up the velocity, and then ballistically, it does not leave anything on the table. It is nuts. And the muzzle velocity from the 24 inch is 29.75 with that particular load hmm. that for an elr gun in a 26 or 28 inch barrel are you kidding me with the manageable recoil shootability that is absolutely unrivaled yeah if you want to lay down at a mile with that thing you're not going to have a whole lot of trouble <laughs> no <laughs> that's that, for sure. it's got nearly a 0.8 g1 bc so that i mean that is again you're not going to match that and if you do it's not going to be by much with any other bullet on the market sure you'd be talking inch at like Inches at yeah, twelve eighteen hundred yards. Yeah, it's a just a fantastic cartridge. I mean, you can't you can't look at a seven millimeter bullet and not just realize that you're yeah. looking at a Ferrari, a Corvette, a, you know, some. It's just they're long. They're and with this cartridge, it's propelling them at the right velocity. You can do a lot with this. Yep, yep. So I think the you know the Night Force ELR matches is, is one of the most notable ELR matches in the country. I think you're going to see some some hot rod sevens there. I think uh, so next yeah. year. Um, for sure. And, and I'm excited for that. And the, and the entire match application for, you know, there's a bunch in our neck of the woods down in Kansas, there's a big ELR group. Um, so I'm excited to see the seven PRC kind of make its debut there. Um, but in my opinion, gosh, for, for the, for the, the hunter, this is yeah, the it, cartridge. I mean, or pardon me, uh, recoil, not overwhelming. You know, there's going to be a pile of guns available. I wish we could touch on them right now, but we can't. Now, on our website, we're going to list all the manufacturers as they start to make their announcements. So that should help folks, you know, find the right firearms. We're going to have some ammo that's shipped to some places, hopefully this fall, so some people can get out there, maybe some hunting seasons for deer yeah. and late season. It's elk, not unrealistic like that. that in November somebody could buy a rifle and ammo at, say, Sportsman's Warehouse or something I and sure use it so. this fall. I sure hope, I hope so. Because, so. yeah, we'll be, we'll be shipping. So. To get into the vein a little bit deeper in hunting, um, not to just focus on it, because again, this cartridge can be used for a bunch of different things. Uh, I have some comparables that I just wanted to bring up because uh, I feel like a lot of us take for granted going to a seven millimeter over, let's say, a big thirty, for example. Um, you know, as far as 
extended range type hunting engagements. Seven millimeter really quote unquote won the West, if you will. A lot of companies got their start. Rifle companies got their start in customized seven millimeters. Mm. So when you look at seven millimeter again, going from a big thirty, you're going to get less recoil. And to me, that is one of the reasons because I'm not a big muscular guy. Like I don't like recoil, even if I was. Sure. Um, so compared to say a hot rod 300 wind mag or the precision hunter load in 300 PRC, you're looking at it roughly 30% reduction in recoil. And to me, that that's pretty sizable. That was, that was, was huge. So you're a seven millimeter guy. I'm kind of a 30 cal guy yeah. and I'm sure the listeners, you know, can, can fall into some of those categories. They I, like, I, like, I like all of our children. Oh yeah, yeah. Obviously, <laughs> we play with everything. Yeah, but, we do. But but I like thirty. I'm I've a three hundred PRC guy. Yeah, I mean, is just... it overkill in certain cases? Yeah, but I've always been a fan of. I want more capability than ride the line. You know. Sure. And and at first, on paper, when you were messing with it, I I was thinking that in the back of my head a little bit. Like I don't know if I'm going to be willing to take that out on elk. <laughs> but I absolutely would. And what you're what you're saying with the recoil. The only way to fully experience the numbers you're talking about is to do it. I would agree. So down I, I've shoot. got my 300 PRC hunting rifle. Um, as I carry it, it weighs about 11 pounds. Suppressed it's a switch scope. barrel system. Yep. So I pulled that barrel off and I put that 7 PRC barrel on. And the amount of reduction in recoil is going to give me a new capacity as a hunter. Now, I'm still going to use that 300 PRC at times. Sure. But I'm, that 7 PRC, if you're in an odd position, I'm contorted over a rock or a tree limb. Mm. Tripod. And the, the target's closer, right? Because those closer range targets, your bullet gets there so fast, it's hard to see the impact because of recoil. Mm -hmm. I can see the impact of that seven millimeter at, you know, four to 600 yards with that lightweight of a rifle. I can't do that with my the 30 cal in that same position. I can see it from six to eight, Yeah, but I lose sight of it because the bullet gets there so fast in combination with the amount of recoil I have to recover from. So that's a, that's a really important number in my yeah. opinion. Yes, well, I would agree. Like, yeah, Joe, you said you're a big 30 cal fan and, and those big thirties, there is a use case where there's a, that's a no brainer. You yeah. go with the big 300 PRC, like a few episodes ago, we released our Moose Mania podcast. You, that was the perfect cartridge for the shot scenario that you guys had. Um, All right. Like if I had to go on a late season cow hunt or something like that, I'll cow hunt for 300. 300 PRC right away. I mean, but yeah. if I have to carry this rifle and go in a mountain and do stuff after Jaden's experience with recoil and mine as well. Yeah, there's, yeah, it's a lot. You can tell the difference. Yeah. Well, and that's what I was, where I was going with that was the recoil. Yes, it's lighter and it hits you less and there's less concussion to you. Um, and that's in more enjoyable. But for me, the benefit of that recoil is you can watch your you can shot. Yes. It. You can get Absolutely. back on for a second shot, shot faster if it's needed. Yep. And to me that, you know, that's critical, uh, because I'd love to kill everything on the first shot and knock on wood usually do. I want to be in the scope. I want to see the bullet. I want to roll the bolt and have one in the chamber ready to go for a second shot, regardless of what it is or what I'm hunting. So for me, that's, that's huge. Now, uh, this also plays into exactly what Jaden said, where you you don't want to ride the line. And for a lot of folks out there, as great as six fives are as a whole, sometimes the six five is riding the line a little bit in some folks' minds, yeah. you know, and a, and a big one is six fives on elk. Do people do it every year with great success? Yes. Absolutely they do. Um, but for some folks, they want more frontal diameter, more, more bullet weight, more energy. And for those folks that don't want to jump into a bigger 30, now you have that natural progression to seven millimeter that gets you that performance that in your mind isn't riding the line like you had mentioned. Mm -hmm. That's a good way to, good way to put that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's still tough to, I mean, it's the, yeah, the, the six, five PRC is been a fantastic success oh, it's and awesome. phenomenal cartridge i yeah it's just it's tough to pick one over the other because they both do things so well mm -hmm. but man if you're sitting there i think for a lot of people you know academically they just look at six five for right. things like elk they go ah maybe they until, feel like until you do line. it yourself you might think that i mean mm -hmm. th this is a <laughs> you know podcast conversation but i i've personally seen it work very awesome. well myself. Mm -hmm. um, so I have no doubt, but I can understand that layman's perspective when they look at it and go, oh, 6'5", 143 grain, or a 7 millimeter 175. Well, that, that's a pretty easy decision. Exactly. And that's, what I, that's where I was going with that, is that in some folks' minds, like you said, Neil, like 
it's a justifiable, understandable thing that I could get why people thought, think that if they haven't used them. Right. Uh, and certainly as the range begins to extend and velocity decays and consequently energy, um, that seven millimeter is going to carry a little bit better. And then as far as trajectory goes, the seven millimeter, you're not giving up anything with no. the seven PRC. It's actually flatter than pretty much anything else out there. That bullet. Yeah. Let yeah. the bullet You've do the work. You've got the marriage of ballistic efficiency and speed. <laughs> yep. And I mean, so, the, you know, this cartridge yeah. is going to be a fantastic choice for, look, it's a great all around cartridge for all, you know, medium and large game in the United States and the world. From it's antelope just, it, to yeah, moose, it's going it to do, do a it. phenomenal job on all those things because you know, recoil is not outlandish. Right. So, you know, do you, do you mind shooting it at a white-tailed deer? Heavens no. Ooh. Does it give you an advantage when you're going to go elk hunting? You bet it does. You know, yep. you bet it does. Yep. Uh, so I wanted to kind of revisit some more of these comparisons here, but now specific to the the 28 nozzle, because that's where it's going to, I think this cartridge is going to be compared mm. to the most and, and for good reason. Well, and the short action version. Oh, the 6.8 six, eight, six, eight Western. 6.8 Western. Will be, it will be compared to that as well. Sure. Which is a very unfair comparison for the 6.8 Western. Well, sure. <laughs> it is, <laughs> but I'm just saying yeah, people are going to do that. Yeah, yeah, they're two newer cartridges. They're two newer cartridges that shoot long, heavy bullets. Yeah, and they're so shooting they're, similar bullet weights because there is a 6.8 Western, Western available with a 175. 175. Yep. Um, but they are not in the same universe. So thanks for bringing yeah, that up, Yeah, don't let things get Western. That's Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't let things get, get Western. Western. Well, compared to the 28 Nosler, the 28 Nosler will beat this down the drag strip by about 100 foot, 125 foot per second with factory ammo comparisons same bullet weight with the same bullet weight now there's two things in my opinion to come to, to keep in mind when you're making that comparison of just velocity the 28 nozzler with the 175 acubond uh, long range bullet factory ammo going to beat it by uh, 125 foot or whatever it is ballistically not the same bullet as our 175 nope. from a shape drag standpoint does it weigh the same yes is it as aerodynamically efficient no Certainly not. Um, and the other thing is that to get that extra 125 foot, you are increasing recoil 32%. Yeah. When you do the, a recoil calculation on a 10 pound rifle between our factory ammo and that factory ammo, to get 125 foot, you get a 32% increase in recoil. Mm. That's putting it up in a 300 PRC. Yeah. Level Why not of go recoil. straight to the 300 PRC? So, and that, you're running a 26 inch barrel. Yeah. yeah true. Not 24. That's yeah. true. And then, uh, yeah, from a trajectory standpoint, again, because the, the efficiency of our, our bullet design and with the heat shield tip uh, not allowing for that, that material to deform and change your, your drag characteristics in flight, although you're starting marginally slower, 125, 150 foot slower, you are going to eventually outrun. Yeah, probably that by bullet. two or 300 yards, the 175 ELDX is outrunning mm -hmm. the ABLR yep. at that point. Yeah, That's typically so, the way that comes out. Yeah, you, you, you pick up the speed at the sacrifice of shootability and recoil, barrel life. That's another one that, you know, a lot of these slightly or more overbore cartridges, that's, that's, a, big, that's a big problem. The, you know, those big 6.5s, you know, and there's a couple of them on the market. Your barrel life is realistically between four and 600 rounds, which for a hunting rifle, okay, but Unless when that, you're in the business of practicing with yeah, your gonna, rifle, that's yes. what I was going to say. If you're in the, and we're all a proponent at this table of you need to be proficient with your rifle. And that only comes with time on the gun. Yep. So, uh, that's, that was a big one for, for me is barrel life, you know, uh, you know, with the bigger overbore seven millimeters. Yeah. You're going to be somewhere, you know, maybe right around a thousand, just south of a thousand. And with the design of this cartridge and with how much, how much propellants in there, you will have barrel life equivalent to that of a traditional seven millimeter Remington Magnum, which for, I mean, that's kind of the benchmark standard there for performance seven millimeters right there. So yeah. you can get that 1500, 1800 round of, of barrel life out of it with significantly less recoil. And then to compare it to the six, eight Western, the six, eight running the 175 grain bullet, it's running that 175 at 2850, 2835 in that neck of the woods. So you're significantly slower with the same weight of bullet. And it's less ballistically efficient. Yeah, so, out of I mean, right out of the gate, you're you can't get there. You're, yeah, you can't. you can't get there. And yeah, retain velocity at a thousand yards between the two. Um, you're looking at right at eighteen hundred feet per second with the seven PRC and uh, fifteen fifty with the six eight Western. So yeah. not 
not uh, not even in the same universe. No, um, and, and the six eight two seventy, you know, bullet class is very limited. It is. You know, when the seven PRC came out, you already had long, heavy monster bullets: the one seventy five, the one eighty, the one ninety eight tip. Mm-hmm. But you just n- didn't have a factory cartridge to use them. With the six eight Western, you have the opposite happen. You have a cartridge that's introduced with. The right twist rate, the right head height. There, there's no great bullets out there that you can't use that you could end up using with this cartridge because it was designed right. None of that was out there. So yeah. it just, it it's much more limited. It is. Yeah. Agreed. hundred percent. So again, I'm, uh, I know I said this earlier, but we, we've got friends at Nosler. We're not trying to just dog on them because of them or, or try to squash their cartridges or anything like that. It's just when you're comparing factual information and it, it, it is what it is. I, you know, yeah. If, if all you adage. want is extreme velocity with lighter weight bullets with a modern cartridge design, 28 nozzler is your ticket. Yeah. If you want Seven to, Weatherby. yeah, either of those two, right? But if you want to increase your capabilities as either a hunter or a match shooter, meaning you need more efficient bullets, let the bullet do the work. You need longevity cartridges that don't have problems with fouling and barrel life and all these things something yep. that's going to last you enough time to practice with it hunt with and shoot it a match those cartridges are not going to do that yep you know and it's it's fine to consider velocity but the other thing is is wind deflection right so oh, absolutely you know a, a higher performance bullet is going to give you a little more forgiveness in the if you dope the wind wrong so yep. you know, that all matters really does absolutely. and one one thing i wanted to talk about once we got to this point in the conversation is with overbore cartridges as a whole and loading them in factory ammunition because that's a, that's a curtain that very few people even know to look behind or no. even care to ask about so when we design a cartridge we have we, what we take this into consideration is how is it going to be to manufacture so let's say we run 5000 boxes of ammo well it's 5000 boxes of 20 you're getting 100,000 rounds that you have to load. And we want round one and round 100,000 to be consistent, accurate, just and, and to run that entire span as smooth as silk, like a, like a sewing machine, just running. Easy. Every time we test it for pressure and velocity, it's consistent over and over and over. Every time we check the accuracy over and over and over, it just performs. We take that into consideration because a lot of folks don't realize Well, if you load 5,000 boxes, 100,000 rounds, well, that takes us a few days, right? So you do that over and over and over throughout the year for a given cartridge. So if it doesn't manufacture well, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. And you look at cartridges that are more overbore, and the smaller you shrink that bore diameter and the larger you make the cartridge case, the more problematic they become to run in great mass. And so, yeah, we can get awesome performance for. 5, 10, 15, 20,000, whatever, however many rounds it is. What about from lot number to lot number to lot number throughout a given year, throughout a, a given decade? Right. How yep. consistent can that performance be? And cartridges like the 28 Nosler um, and those other cartridges that are just grossly overbore, they create problems. Absolutely. And you're limited on propellants. I'd like Jaden to, to expand on that a little bit. Like you get a big case. What does that mean for us? Yeah, and there's probably going to be some listeners out there that are pretty savvy in wildcatting or they've just researched cartridge development a lot that are going to wonder, okay, you already had this 300 PRC. Why didn't you just neck that down? You have more capacity. Why did why did we move the shoulder back on the 7 PRC and effectively reduce the capacity of its parent case? And the purpose of that is as soon as you start going to a smaller bore diameter, you go from 30 caliber or, or 300 down to 7 millimeter. That reduction in bore diameter means you've lost some area when you did that. One of the ways that pressure is controlled or or measured is based on the amount of area that that pressure is in when it's generated. So if we simply necked the 300 PRC case down, by going to the 7 millimeter, pressure is going to increase because the area was decreased. So you have to drop your charge weight at that point. Well, now when you drop your charge weight, you have space in the case. And that's a major problem. Your extreme spreads and your standard deviations go up. You have sensitivity to the positioning of the ammunition or the rifle at the time you fire that's the a, shot. That's so a big one. Okay, we'll down we'll touch on that a little bit more. And so yeah. when we, you know, we've said this before, but when we design a cartridge, we start with what's the job? Once we define the job, what bullets do the job? Okay. How fast do these bullets that will do the job need to be going to do that job? That's like the third step. 
And then we say, okay, what propellants would push those bullets that fast to do the job? Identify those propellants. We say, how much of those propellants does it need to produce that velocity for that bullet that does the job? Yeah. Once you've done that, you can wrap the cartridge case around that amount of propellant and that amount only. You don't go way more or way less because right. then you run into performance yeah. problems. And then another, uh, to compound on exactly what you just said, so you shrink your surface area, so your pressures go up, so you have to decrease the charge weight. What you could do is find a slower burning propellant. But when you're already using the slowest burning propellants that offer great accuracy and great temperature stability, right. where do you go from there? Mm. Right. You go slower, but you become less efficient, less temperature stable, less accurate just to try to fill the case. And that's, um, you know, this is exactly the same situation like Neil's comment about shooting uphill and downhill that we experience with 300 PRC versus a 300 Norma. Yes. Um, and yeah, walk us through how that went down and, and about the angled shooting. Well, you see that a lot in the wildcat world where somebody that doesn't have pressure measurement instruments, they don't know any better. They just think if I neck it down, I get as much powder as I did before, but it's a lighter weight bullet. It goes faster. And that's the end of the equation. It's not true. Like we just, uh, examined there with the, with the volume relationship. So with the 300 PRC or with the 300 Norma, the parent case was 338. They necked it down to 30 cal. You got to reduce your charge weight if you're going to drop your pressures back down to a reasonable level. There's too much space in the case. When you shoot uphill or downhill, your velocity spreads are horrendous. Because the powder is either back or in the rear right, part of the case or you're, forward, you're right? You're changing so. the early ignition cycle of the propellant. You're changing yeah. the timing of it. And so with 300 PRC, we, we took the same tact. I mean, 6.5 Creedmoor, you know, all of these cartridges that we've done in the last couple of decades here have taken that tact from a design standpoint. Let's do it in that reverse order and wrap everything around the end job it's meant to do. And if something isn't supporting that end job, it doesn't get a hand in the design. And you see the same thing with, with the 7. But for those listening that are wondering why we didn't just neck it down, that's the reason why. Mm, sure. It'd be, and yeah, that, uh, yeah, trying to load a whole bunch. If we laid, yeah, if we, if we just simply neck down the 300, trying to load hundreds of thousands of rounds a year, we'd be chasing our tail. It would be, be fast, drop the charge weight. It would be erratic. It would be, I mean, yeah, it would it's be, a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. Because you're, we're limited at the, at the propellants we have to load with. And so, sure. so is the reloader or hand loader out mm -hmm. there. You know, there's only so many powders available to you. Well, you can get in between speeds. If we would have necked down the 300 PRC to the seven, we would have been in between speeds because you're right. We couldn't have kept using the same powders that the 300 PRC was using, we'd have to go to the next slower because that bore got smaller. We go to the next slower powder, now it's way too slow. Now you're not even achieving your target velocity because the next available powder is yeah. too slow to get it. Yep. And that, and that, yeah, again, kind of full circle. If I was a, building a custom rifle, I could do any of these cartridges, the 300 Norma or whatever, and I could make it work. And if I was loading my own ammo, I could make it work great. Because you're not adhering to a pressure. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's why or um yeah or a length or or whatever it is yeah you're you're bending the rules which is fine if that's what you're doing if you're a wildcat or yeah. custom hand loader custom rifle but because we're a conforming member um those sammy specifications mean something but I, I wouldn't yeah conforming almost sounds like we're we're not providing the highest performance possible because this thing is a race car there's no doubt about oh, it oh no doubt yeah. about Absolutely. it right and you I, my my dad uh i just built him a rifle in in seven millimeter prc and he's blown away. Uh, he was out shooting it here recently. Goes out in the hay field, stakes up a steel target, ranges it, puts it in Ford off. And it's a Magnum cartridge. And he's blown away at how manageable the recoil is and how fast these bullets get to the steel. And when they get there, <laughs> the authority in which they arrive, he's, he's just blown away. And this is a guy that, you know, has, has had bigger Magnums, big 30 cals, uh, and that, you know, has shot a bunch of Creedmoor and some six millimeters and stuff. And so he's just really impressed with the manageable recoil. And then it's there. Yeah. It, you pull the trigger and it is at your mm -hmm. target, especially at what I'm going to call practical distances inside of 800 yards. It's, it's there right now. And when it gets there, you know about it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think for the, the guys out there that have always been seven millimeter guys, Yes. Your day has come, and you're yeah. the perfect example. Exactly. Right? You've yeah, always been a seven and, guy. And you want, you know, you're, you're comfortable, you want a long action cartridge. 6.5 PRC, short to slash medium action cartridge, a little shorter action. Um, 300 is, is when you need to reach out there and touch them, and you want to make sure that wherever you're going, it's going to do the job. Yeah. I mean, we have a bunch of uh, golf clubs, basically. Is right. kind of when you I, have to. 
And I mean, I think we, you should. We, we are I think offering, you should. And we are offering, you know, what I'd like to consider some of the best golf clubs, which is which is important. And they all have, they have overlap in some yep. applications. And then in some applications, one is just going to be better than the other. You yep. know, starting at the six arc, six creed, six five, six five sure. PRC. Well, you know, I think that's a great point, Neil. And yeah, like Joe had had said there, you should you should have a whole bunch of golf clubs, or you know, enough go- golf clubs to golf the course or whatever. And there's different use cases for all of them. And with the six five PRC as capable of a cartridge as that is, I would feel comfortable comfortable building an ultralight six five PRC. I mean. Mm-hmm. Titanium everything, titanium screws, sure. super, short super light. light, short barrel, because it's such a manageable cartridge to shoot with the low recoil. I well, wouldn't do that with a well, seven or three hundred. In our in our six five, I think we did it. We did a we all, we were combined on that six five PRC podcast. But I think Jason Hornady was in there. Or maybe it was about Tajikistan. But when he was in the airport um, in Tajikistan, I think. Oh yeah, in uh, yeah, I mean of, or Istanbul, something. Like that. Yeah, maybe it was Istanbul. But anyway, so all these sheep hunters were going to somewhere. And uh, everybody had a six five. All all of them had a six five PRC. PRC. Yeah. And so that Every, proves I mean, proofs that, in the pudding. Yeah. So it's it, capable, it's capable at range and you can build those ultra light rifles and not get, you know, hit in the mouth. Yeah. Uh, and and that's a perfect use case for a six five PRC. And then to juxtapose that, your moose hunt with your yeah. wife. There was <laughs> that is the ultimate perfect use case for a three hundred PRC. So I met a lot of those guys coming out of there and Every guy that I personally talked to, which was not everybody that was in that region, if you will, every one of them had a 300 PRC. That's so cool. Every yeah. one of them. And it's just- Well, that's a- It's a big it's animal. It's a big animal, boy. You don't know well, how far yeah. away they're going to be. It's a big be. animal. You're in bear country. You don't know how far away. Yeah. You don't know your shot just because of the terrain you're in. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's why not take that? To Jaden's point, I, I want to make sure that I got enough yeah. tool here. You don't here want to ride to, the line. Yeah. Exactly. I want to be the limiting factor, not my equipment. Yep. yep. Well, and so, yeah, and like, the seven just covered, you know, there is overlap. The seven has overlap into a lot of those areas to the bigger cartridge and then down to the smaller more, cartridge. It does a lot of things really well. Yep. I mean, I think it, it trends probably more for the person who, like I said, you know, you could, you, you're you going to hunt deer with this thing. It's perfectly perfect. It's perfect. adequate for that, obviously. But then if a person is... And I, I don't know, maybe I'm harkening back to when I was a teenager and used to pour over magazines and catalogs and look at numbers and, you know, trying to figure out what's that perfect cartridge, you know, you're looking for the cartridge that you would obviously use for local animals such as deer. I mean, guys in the Southeast, it's going to be white-tailed deer, pigs maybe, but then there's always the dream that one day you're going to go out West and hunt elk, right? Yep. So if you're going to analyze from that perspective, this one certainly gets that edge because it's, it's going to be a yeah. it's a great elk cartridge great it mountain is. hunting cartridge great well, mountain and mule deer yeah, yeah western sure. mule deer it's like the, i mean seven 270 and seven mag are like the you talk about mule deer those two cartridges enter the conversation just by definition yeah. now you have the best of all of those yeah yeah seriously you have the recoil you know seven recoil the bu- bullets all the things the you're talking about trajectory yeah. um, you, you have everything there going back to neil's point that is perfect and probably why i built a seven mag years ago when I built my first custom rifle growing up here, uh, in, in the great plains and in the Western side of the Midwest here, I think everywhere East of us is just like me. And and it sounds like just like you, Neil, like I'm going to hunt whitetail deer every year and I really enjoy doing it and I'm going to do it, but I'm always daydreaming about going to Wyoming, going going to Colorado, going to Idaho, going to Montana, doing those Western hunts. So for the guy out there that is going to spend the majority of his time shooting white-tailed deer, but every year, every other year, whenever he draws a tag, he's getting out west. This is a great cartridge where, yeah, shoot your deer at a traditional range, you know, in the woods or whatever, but then you don't have to sacrifice anything and you're perfectly equipped to go hunt mule deer in the sand hills or, you know, in the in the high desert and have no range limitations. Just, it's a perfect package. Yeah, it really is. Well, at 14... I'm in Wyoming growing up, and I am the geek that looked at the <laughs> ballistic. Oh, we were all, we, we were all, I'm we were say, all that guy. I never I'm did the, that. Yeah. I never did You never that. did that? Well, I did, and I'm looking at all that stuff because I'm now of age, and I get to hunt. Growing up in Wyoming, I get to hunt. Big I get to go buy my licenses, and I bought a 7 mag. Yep. That's what I had. The first gun I bought was a 7 mag. mag. And I shot and a white-tailed I deer three times. It was dead on the first shot, but I was in such buck fever. I didn't know what was yep. going on. Uh I've said this before, my first rifle was chambered in 257 Roberts, which is a descendant of 7 by 57 released to us in the year of our Lord, 1898. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, no, I'm 
obviously excited, probably visually excited about this release, about this cartridge, about what this means for us as hunters and shooters, uh, because it really does solve a problem. And uh, for, for those out there, yeah, this is just going to be a home run. Uh, talking to the rifle builders during the development and release mm-hmm. of this product. Yeah, like I think Neil mentioned it earlier in the podcast, that you talk to the, the gun makers and they're smiling, they're drooling. Because I think we've built a reputation. Um, I know Joe's had a lot to do with this in his time here. Within the industry, if we bring a cartridge to market, it's a no-brainer. The factory ammo is going to be as good as anybody can hand load for the most part. I mean, that's proven itself with our ELD match and our precision hunter ammo. And the cartridges are going to just plain shoot, whether you're talking to the giant gun manufacturer that has a really affordable rifle and also a really high-end rifle, or you're just talking to the custom gun builder. Mm -hmm. They're all excited because our reputation is these cartridges are efficient, they're balanced, and they just plain work right out of the gate. And that's something that I think everybody in the industry that knows about this is excited about, and I think the end user is going to benefit from greatly. Absolutely. Uh, What about reloaders then? You got the 190 ATIP and then uh, reloading data. Yeah, reloading data is going to be published. It'll be available at Hornady.com. I think it's slash reloading. Uh, Otherwise, it's at the very bottom of the website. We'll get it pushed into the uh, available app, the reloading app as well. Um, And that's the 190 ATIP all the way down to our 100 and 39 grain bullet so you can shoot anything <laughs> you want with this the 139 first bullet i ever hand loaded me too yeah, yeah. same one that's interesting spire point boat tail spire point yeah gotta have the boat tail but if i'd have had a 7 prc because i did look at all those numbers yeah. and those charts i would have bought a 7 prc or a 7 mag just it, it would have oh yeah here we go yep i can shoot all these and i can shoot all these bullets and these new bullets yep i'll buy that one yep it would have been a no-brainer you know the decision would have been easy so i hope i hope that resonates with people Exactly. Awesome. Yeah, it's a it's a modern magnum, modern seven millimeter magnum that takes advantage of these big bullets. Yep, and it yeah really, really does uh, fit that gap left between the six five and the three hundred, which are outstanding cartridges on their own. And now we have a whole family that if if there's something you want to do, there's a precision rifle cartridge that'll do it. Yeah, it breaks it, my heart. Absolutely. I can't I can't pick a favorite child. I love them all, so <laughs> yeah. it's just tough. But yeah, it is because yeah. they each have such a perfect use case. But that seven to me, the reason I'm so drawn to it. Uh, it does a lot of it's things. Just it does really a lot well. of really but balanced. Do you have a 6.5 PRC? Yes. Do you have one? Yeah, of And course. you have a 300? Yeah. I do. So we I'm all, just saying and every a six arc. And but I'm saying it. every <laughs> but everybody at this table, my point is everybody at at this table has a 6.5, a 7 and a 30. Yeah, yeah you don't go play we, golf with one club. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. and we're the same as a lot of other people if out there that golf, just If you play golf, you know, I don't yeah. I don't play golf, but uh, yeah. we're the same as a lot of other hunters and shooters out there that you know, you know what? Yes, I, I'm going to have those three rifles. Yep. And, and Or pick one if you want one. And the other part of this, that's, this is fun because this has been leaking for a while. So sure. there's been folks out there that kind of knew something like this was coming out. So to finally, you know, be able to talk about it is, is, uh, is comforting. And a little it bit is. of a relief too, because we, we want to tell people about this thing, but we yeah. can't till it release. Right. And we use that time between, you know, things start leaking out or the Sammy drawings hit the the sammy website before the cartridge released we use that time to refine things and mm-hmm. make sure okay how many lot numbers of brass have we tested the, the, you know these powders and how many different lot numbers of powders have we tested so we use made that. productions run yeah production runs correctly we do we do yeah. you know those these things in that interim time between you know people know about it a little bit and it's leaking out there between it's that and its actual release to make sure it's ready to go out of the gate. Ready to go. But if anybody says they were the first to actually take an, an animal with the seven PRC, what would, what would you tell them, Seth? Uh, it depends on who says it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, there's been a few firsts. Uh, yeah. uh, Probably you. No, I wasn't. I never hunted with this. I did. Uh, I mentioned earlier that one of the wildcats we kind of played around with initially was a six, five PRC necked up. Mm. And, uh, I've taken animals with that one because um, I, I, you know, chambered a rifle. We didn't have brass available for, okay. the, for this actual 7 PRC until, um, gosh, it wasn't until 2020 maybe. And yeah, uh, ni- uh, 19, yeah 19 or 20, yeah. 19 so, or 20. Uh, I, I was not Might the first. be one of the Von Benedicts then. I think anyway, it, that's a it, semantic. It could I have been, but I, yeah, I know the, of the first moose, the first elk, the first giant <laughs> mule deer. Yeah, uh, that yeah, this thing is laid down. And- yeah, we've tested it extensively. I mean, that's that's the other thing. It's been out. We've taken it overseas. It's and performed flawlessly every single time. 
Yep. And the number of gun makers are going to adopt this thing is going to be impressive. Yeah. I haven't been able to break it yet. And I've tried. So that's a good sign. <laughs> yeah. That's a good sign. Yeah. It's got the, that is a good sign. Got the Q stamp of approval. <laughs> awesome. Well, you know, we've got this cartridge. We've got a host of other new products out for 2023. Check them out, guys, if you're listening at Hornady.com. We've got some really cool stuff, but the 7 PRC is is uh, near and dear to our hearts. Is there anything around the table here you guys want to uh, give our listeners a send-off to with the 7 PRC in mind? No, I'm just glad we got to all be a part of it. Yeah. Tell people about it. Ditto. Yeah, go try it. It's cool to hear all about it, but when you do it, it's totally different. Yeah, yeah absolutely, yes. And uh, I guess the one thing that I want to leave w- the listener with is Yes, we're catching up on back orders. You, you know, yes, things are getting easier. And that's why we released this cartridge is we can now support it. But just know that Hornady Manufacturing is growing space, machines, employees, and we're not irresponsibly releasing a cartridge that we can't support because I know that's going to be a concern. And we've taken some, I say we, the Hornadies have taken some pretty measurable steps to, uh, uh, to get that capacity online where it needs to be. So yeah, big steps. Yeah. Indeed. So with that, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed this uh, deep dive into the 7mm PRC. Uh, it's a cartridge that I'm excited about. Can't wait to get out in the field and use it. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one.